Euclid's theorem is a fundamental statement in number theory that asserts that there are infinitely many prime numbers. There are several well-known proofs of the theorem. Euclid's proof. Euclid offered the following proof published in his work Elements, which is paraphrased here. Consider any finite list of prime numbers P1, P2, Pn. It will be shown that at least one additional prime number not in this list exists. Let P be the product of all the prime numbers in the list. P equals P1, P2, Pn. Let Q equals P plus 1. Then Q is either prime or not. If Q is prime, then there is at least one more prime than is in the list. If Q is not prime, then some prime factor P divides Q. If this factor P were on our list, then it would divide P, but P divides P plus 1 equals Q. If P divides P and Q, then P would have to divide the difference of the two numbers, which is minus P or just 1. Since no prime number divides 1, this would be a contradiction and so P cannot be on the list. This means that at least one more prime number exists beyond those in the list. This proves that for every finite list of prime numbers there is a prime number not on the list, and therefore there must be infinitely many prime numbers. Euclid is often erroneously reported to have proved this result by contradiction, beginning with the assumption that the set initially considered contains all prime numbers, or that it contains precisely the n smallest primes, rather than any arbitrary finite set of primes. Although the proof as a whole is not by contradiction, a proof by contradiction is within it, which is that none of the initially considered primes can divide the number q above. Euler's proof. Another proof by the Swiss mathematician Leonhard Euler relies on the fundamental theorem of arithmetic that every integer has a unique prime factorization. If P is the set of all prime numbers, Euler wrote that, the first equality is given by the formula for a geometric series in each term of the product. To show the second equality, distribute the product over the sum. In the result, every product of primes appears exactly once and so by the fundamental theorem of arithmetic the sum is equal to the sum over all integers. The sum on the right is the harmonic series, which diverges. Thus the product on the left must also diverge. Since each term of the product is finite, the number of terms must be infinite. Therefore, there is an infinite number of primes. Erdos's proof. Paul Erdos gave a third proof that also relies on the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. First note that every integer n can be uniquely written as where r is square-free, or not divisible by any square numbers. Now suppose that there are only finitely many prime numbers and call the number of prime numbers k. Fix a positive integer n and try to count the number of integers between 1 and n. Each of these numbers can be written as r s2 where r is square-free and r and s2 are both less than n. By the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, there are only two k square free numbers r as each of the prime numbers factorizes r at most once, and we must have s less than square root n. So the total number of integers less than n is at most 2k square root n, i.e., since this inequality does not hold for n sufficiently large, there must be infinitely many primes. Fersenberg's proof. In the 1950s, Hillel Fersenberg introduced a proof using poinsett topology. See Fersenberg's proof of the infinitude of primes. Some recent proofs. Pinasco and Pablo Pinasco has written the following proof. Let P1, Pn be the smallest n primes. Then by the inclusion-exclusion principle, the number of positive integers less than or equal to x that are divisible by one of those primes is dividing by x and letting x infinity gives this can be written as if no other primes than p1, pn exist, then the expression in is equal to and the expression in is equal to 1, but clearly the oppression in exceeds 1, therefore there must be more primes than p1, pn. Fong in 2010, Junho, Peter Fong published the following proof by contradiction. Let k be any positive integer. Then according to the Polanyak's formula where but if only finitely many primes exist, then 
contradicting the fact that for each k the numerator is greater than or equal to the denominator. Sidark Philip Sidark gave the following proof which does not use reductio ad absurdum. It also does not use Euclid's lemma that if the prime p divides up then it must divide a or b. For any n greater than 1, n and n plus 1 have no common factors, they are co-prime. Therefore n2 equals n must have at least two different prime factors. n2 and n2 plus 1 are co-prime and n2 has at least two prime factors. Therefore n3 equals n2 has at least three prime factors. By induction for any k, nk equals nk1 has at least k prime factors. Therefore there is an infinity of primes. Thus for example 2 times times plus 1 times times plus 1 plus 1 equals 1806 has at least 4 prime factors. Proof using the irrationality of pi. Representing the Leibniz formula for pi as an Euler product gives the numerators of this product to the odd prime numbers and each denominator is the multiple of four nearest to the numerator. If there were finitely many primes this formula would show that pi is a rational number whose denominator is the product of all multiples of four that are one more or less than a prime number, contradicting the fact that pi is irrational. Proof using factorials. Assume that the number of prime numbers is finite. There is thus an integer, p which is the largest prime. p is divisible by every integer from 2 to p, as it is the product of all of them. Hence, plus 1 is not divisible by every integer from 2 to p. p plus 1 is therefore either prime or is divisible by a prime larger than p. This contradicts the assumption that p is the largest prime. The conclusion is that the number of primes is infinite.